Alright, I'm going to start this off with just giving you all the powers, all the exponent rules that we're going to be dealing with. There's several. There's my mark around. Alright, first one we've got is going to be our product rule. Product rule tells us when we're multiplying with the same base, A and A is the same base, so whatever number that you have there, all you do is add your exponents. Okay, then we've got the quotient rule. Quotient means divide, so when we're dividing with the same base, all you do is take that base and <coughs> subtract your exponents. Okay, then, yes, sir. On the zero exponent rule, anything, and we talked about this one day last week, anything to the zero power is always equal to one. The only exception to that is you can't have zero to the zero power. So A can't be zero. All right, negative exponent, that's the one every year that everybody struggles the most with. The negative exponent rule says when something is a negative exponent, it goes on bottom and becomes positive. Are you caught up with me? Or, because i got a couple more to add. Okay, I'll wait for a second. to a power. Power rules, if we have some number or variable to a power and then to a power, all you do is multiply the powers. Just going to go through. There's there's some more special ones. It's just rewriting the same ones that we've already done. I'm not going to uh, cop, have you copy all those right now. Just want to go through and simplify some expressions and let you get used to using them all. All the different rules. So I'll start off. Everybody done with that page? You may need another second on it. Okay. All right. Start off pretty simple here. If I had m to the eighth times m to the 6 that I'm told to simplify. How would I rewrite that? Yeah, that's exactly right. Same base. So m times m is going to be m and then we just add our powers. So that's all we could do to that because we don't know what m is. Okay, now if I saw something that said negative 5p to the 4th times negative 9p to the 5th. Now this is the same thing, we've just got a coefficient other than 1 on both of them. So we're going to take our coefficients, negative 5 times negative 9, what's that? 44. 45, but then our, what our exponent's on is still the same, so I'm going to bring that over, and what do I do with those exponents? Uh, Add them on again. Alright, now we'll do one where we got multiple exponents. All right, I got negative 3x squared y cubed times 7xy to the 4. See if you can simplify that one real quick for me. Go.
Ah, what'd you get? Very good. Just look like your coefficients. Negative 3 times 7, I got you negative 21. X to the second, and remember this X, it doesn't have an exponent, it's understood 1. So 2 plus 1 is where they got cubed, and then 3 and 4 is where our 7 came from. All right, very good on that. Those were all the product rule, all that had to do with the adding of the exponents. Okay, now I've got... All right, I got four zero exponents for you there. On the first one, what's 29 to the zero? One. one. This one, negative 29 to the zero. One. Now, what's different in the way that one and the next one's written is where that negative gets comes into play. This one that we just did, you were correct, is one. It says take that whole thing and raise it to the zero power. This one says raise 29 to the zero power and then make it the opposite. So that'll get you a negative one. Okay, because we do 29 to the zero and then make it the opposite. That's the way your calculator does negatives. I don't like it, but that's the way it does it. All right, this one was my favorite one. Zero. Very good. It is zero because that's one minus one. Very good. All right. Everybody okay? Easy stuff? All right, six to the negative fifth. All right, what we're going to do on this, I'm not going to actually uh, evaluate this all the way out, even though we could. We're just going to write this using positive exponents. So we're still going to have an exponent in our answer. So what did we do when it, we had a negative power? Good. Put it on bottom and make it positive. So that's it. Yes, I could figure out what 6 to the 5th is, and it'll be 1 over something. <laughs> I'm just going to leave that there. That's a very small number, 1 over 6 to the 5th. Okay, what about 2x, that whole thing, to the negative 4th? Do the same thing. 1 over 2x to the 4th. Why do we need to keep that parentheses around the 2x? Good. Both of those pieces get raised to the fourth power. If I don't have the parentheses, it might look like it's just on the X. But both of those pieces are getting raised to the fourth power. Alrighty. Now, what about, since we said that, what about something like this? Negative 7P to the negative fourth. I'm not going to put the whole thing underneath one here. Because that negative 4 is not going to both pieces. It's only going to the piece. So that negative 7 is going to stay on top. And then you put your P to the 4th on bottom. <coughs> Bless you. A lot of people don't understand why I didn't put a 1 up there. I did. Bless you. Negative 7 times 1 is negative 7, isn't it? So it's still the same. All right, what if it's written the other way? So you just nope, multiply all of it by one. That's just the rule. It's always going to be one over. Okay. Right. Right. All right, now if they're written a little differently, this one says 1 over 4 to the negative third. On all the previous ones, the negative power was on top. Now I put it on bottom. When it was on top, we put it on bottom and made it positive. So if it's on bottom, put it on top and make it positive. So this will be the same as 4 to the third. The directions on this one actually say to evaluate. So forms 4 16 times 4 64. Correct. All right, I like this problem. This one says 3 to the negative third divided by 9 to the negative 1. Because now what we're going to do is we're going to take care of both of those negative exponents one at a time. 
3 to the negative third would be the same as 1 over 3 to the third. 9 to the negative 1, that's on the bottom, so now it goes on the top. I can put over 1 if I want to. Okay, let that sink in. Everybody see what we did on that. That good? 3 to the negative third, it was negative exponent, so it had to go on the bottom. Negative exponent down here is already on the bottom, so we put it on the top. Okay, negative exponent goes opposite and becomes positive. Now that's 1 over 27, so 9 over 27 is the same as 1 third, isn't it? Anytime it's a negative power, it goes in the opposite spot and becomes positive. So this was on top, it went on bottom and became positive. Okay, so it's a negative. Yeah, I just didn't put a 1 exponent because you don't have to, but that might have been what confused you. 9 to the negative 1 is now 9 to the 1. Now, what some people will do from this problem here that we just worked, they're going to say that's just the same as 9 over 3 cubed. Just flip it since everything's negative, right? That'll get you the same answer. 9 over 27 is 1 third. It didn't become one. It when I took my nine to the negative one up there, it became nine to the positive one. It didn't become one. Oh, I, I think I know what you mean. I did these in two separate steps. I took three to the negative third. That's it. And then I took nine to the negative one. That's it. Oh, okay. Yeah, made more sense. Let's look at some other stuff here. I got m to the eighth divided by m to the thirteenth. All right. What's our? We got same base, m and m. So what's our rule with division? What do we do with them? Subtract. So you just subtract top minus bottom. So 8 minus 13 is negative 5. But you can't stop there because you can't leave a negative exponent. So what's m to the negative 5 the same as? Add a kid. That's it. Simple stuff. What about if we had 5 to the negative 6 divided by 5 to the negative 8? Some people will get rid of the negative exponents first, and that's okay, but it's really easiest just to go ahead and do your subtraction on this, because this is going to be 5, and then if I subtract on top minus bottom, negative 6 minus negative 8. What's negative 6 minus negative 8? That's it. Would you not, would you not divide the 5? Mm -mm, it stays. The, same, the base stays whatever it was, but it's the same like that. We'll do one in a minute. Good question. Bless you. Thank you. All right. This is not exactly what Katie was asking about, but it's on the same road. If I had x to the third divided by y to the fifth, what do I do with that? That's right, I can't simplify that any because the x and the y are not the same. So that one will just stay, stay as it is there. Alright, here I've got r to the fifth to the fourth. So I've got a power to a power, the power rule. What do I do on power to a power? Multiply, very good. So that would just be r to the 20th. And okay, this thing says negative 3y to the 5th 
squared. All right, a lot of people will make an error on this one. That squared is outside that entire thing, so everything gets the squared, even that coefficient. So what's negative 3 squared? Positive 9. Now when we go to the y, that's power to a power. So that's right, it is 10. People will forget that negative 3, or they'll think, well, I'm going to multiply 5 times 2, so I'm just going to multiply negative 3 times 2. No. The coefficient you raise to the power. Negative 3 squared. All right, when we have a fraction, this still goes along with the power rule. When we have a fraction to a power, we've talked about this before when we were simplifying stuff, that power goes to the numerator and denominator. So this would be 3 to the third over 4 to the third. Now I can't divide those because it's a 3 and a 4, but I can figure out what each of them to the third is. 3 to the third, 4 to the third. would have pivoted up. Yeah. Nine and three is the only thing going to try to sell the big numbers. Yeah. All right. What if I had two thirds to the negative fourth power. The directions say right with only positive exponents and evaluate. It's a negative form of it. There we go. Okay, so the negative four has to go to the two, which if I had two to the negative four, that's the same as one over two to the fourth, which is the same as two times two is four times two is eight times two is sixteen. One sixteenth. Right? Okay, now I've got, on the bottom down there, I've already taken the 2 out, so I'm going to say that's the same as 1 over 3 to the negative 4th, right? Which is 3 to the 4th, which is, 3 times 3 is 9 times 3 is 27 times 3 is 81. 81. Okay, so I had... These, these are my two things that I've got to put together to get an answer now. I got a whole number and then I got a fraction. So where would this whole number go? Yeah, I think so. Just flip it and do them both to the fourth would be the other way, Scout. That's a good idea. Since this is a negative fourth power, what Scout's saying is he just went ahead and did, flipped it, and made it the positive fourth. Three to the fourth is 81, and then two to the fourth is 16. Good job, Scout. Why would you do a negative Well, I, I'm done with the two. I did the two up here, so I'm done with that. So now i got to do the negative four to the bottom. And since I've already taken that two out, I'd put it underneath one because I've already, I just know I've already used it is all. But whatever you do, the negative four has to go to both of them. So I was just doing the bottom piece now. All right, let's see if we can throw several stuff, several steps together. You can. Mm -hmm. And you could have that original problem, you could have just typed that in and yeah, got it. Typed it in and did the fraction. Mm -hmm. Or that's one the right Yep. Good deal. Alright, here we got 4 squared to the negative 5th. It says simplify. So that's all we got. So simplify that. 
4 squared to the negative fifth. And you could actually do this a couple of different ways. What do you think? How might you start this? Okay, I heard somebody say negative 10. That would be my power to a power rule. Multiply those. So that would give me 4 to the negative 10. But we can't leave a negative exponent. So that would just be 1 over 4 to the 10. Now you can write that if you want to. 4 times 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 4. Figure out what that is. I'm not going to. We're going to do scientific notation here in just a little bit. That on your calculator, I would imagine, would show up in scientific notation. It does. On the date on mine. It's a pretty small number. One over that. It's pretty small. All right. Here we got x to the negative fourth times x to the negative 6 times x to the 8. Alright, so we got same base all the way through, x times x times x. So my answer is going to be that base. What do you do with powers when it's multiplication with same base? Add them. It's negative 4 plus negative 6 is negative 10. Negative 10 plus 8 is negative 2. Can't leave a negative exponent. 1 over x squared. All right, one more before we go to scientific notation. I got 2y over x cubed all squared times 4y over x to the negative 1. Alright. What would your plan of attack be? How would, what would you want to start doing? Um, I'd start with distribute them. Yeah. Thank you. The 2? Okay, so this here would get, remember you square the coefficient, so that's going to be 2 squared is 4. That would be y squared. Let me bump that up so we can see it. On the bottom there, that's power to a power, so that would be x to the 6. Can I do anything else there on the left side? No. Okay, what about over here on the right? That's right, Valentina. The easy thing to do here, since a one exponent doesn't change anything, two to the first is still two. The only thing, since that's a negative, is we just flip it. Okay, good. I'm going to look at what Leah's talking about. It's not going to be multiplying, but I'm going to reduce some things diagonally. I've got a four on top and a four on bottom. Those cancel out. Okay. On the x's, I've got an x to the first on top and an x to the sixth on bottom. So what's that going to reduce to? X to the fifth and one. X to the fifth, and will it go on top or bottom? Bottom. Because by our rule, one minus six is negative five. Since it's negative, it would go on bottom and become positive. Okay. So I'm done with that. Now onto the y's. We've got a y squared over a y, which is just y, top or bottom. Top, because it's a positive y to the positive first. And that's it. Good job. All right, scientific notation. That's what we're going to look at now. Scientific notation, just a way of rewriting real big or real small numbers. Always based on power of 10. Your calculator puts an E, we type times 10. If I had a 29,800,000, I wanted to rewrite that in scientific notation. Your rule is it's going to be a single digit to the left of the decimal point. So it's got to be anything between 1 and 9 to the left of the decimal point. So I could not put the decimal point right here where my mouse is because that would be a 29 to the left of it. I've got to have a one digit, so it's going to have to only have that two in front. 
So it's going to be 2 point, and then you write every other number except the zeros. So 2.98. It's always times 10. Now the decimal point originally, if there's not one written, it's understood to be at the back on the back right. To get from there to the behind the two, I've moved it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So that would be to the seventh power. That's about seventh grade stuff. There you all remember that? Yeah, that's a, now what, what's the what's the catch? Where's the hard stuff? Hold on, hold on speed. All right, if we had the other way, point, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight zeros, 503. We're told to write that in scientific notation. Where's the decimal going to go? After the 5, so I'm going to have 5.03 times 10 to the, now I'm moving it to the right this time. So my exponent's going to be negative. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it'll be to the negative nine. Alright, so those are both given to you in standard and we wrote it in scientific. What if something's given to you scientific and you write it in standard? Let's do a couple of those. 2.51 times 10 to the third. Remember, a lot of times people get confused on which way to move the decimal. If it's a positive exponent, your number's going to get bigger. So you're going to want to move this decimal to the right. How many times do you move it? Three, one, two. So then I've got to add a zero if I run out of numbers, right? Good job. What about if we add negative 6.8 times 10 to the negative fourth? Here my power is negative. So I've got to make my number smaller. So I've got to move my decimal point to the left four times. So I'm going to have negative points. I'm going to have to have three zeros, aren't I? Two. One, two, three, four. Alright, now why this is included in this lesson is what we're fixing to look at now, how they think they, we can use that to help us simplify stuff. I've got 200,000 times point zero 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 three divided by point zero six. Now you could just type that on your calculator and you could get the answer pretty quick. But they want us to look at doing this using scientific notation. So if they did the two hundred thousand that would be two times ten to the one, two, three, four, five, right? Times if I wrote this in scientific notation, that'd be three times ten to the negative one, two, three, four divided by 0 0.06 would just be six times ten to the negative two. Okay, so now what? I know you could have already typed it in your calculator and had the answer, but just humor me right now. To, I look at my just my coefficients up there, not the scientific notation stuff, just my 2 times 3. Okay, that's going to get me a 6 times 10, and then I would add those exponents. So 6 times 10 to the first, right? And I'm still divided by 6 times 10 to the negative 2. Okay, so this is the same base. So my answer is going to be that base. What do you do with those exponents? Subtract 1 minus negative 2 is 3. 6 times 10 to the third, 6. 1, 2,000, right? I would probably never do that, but it's an option for you. Hold on, it wouldn't be 6, so I've made an error. And that's why I don't, one of the other reasons I don't like this. This one, and I think Austin said this earlier, I'm not sure somebody did. This one you actually do divide on the coefficients. When it's just your normal rule, you just bring it down. But this one, it would actually be a 1 there, which would make that be 1,000. Is that what you got on the calculator? 1,000? Anybody did it on the calculator? All right, so we got a lot of power rules, scientific notation. Just know how to work with it. If you get a problem like that, I, don't, I wouldn't do that. That takes longer than just doing it normal, but it's an option. 
Uh, any of that you need to see more on? Anybody good? Alright, that's a wrap.